Hey everyone, this is Austin with Austin Lindsay Photography. And today I thought I would kind of go give you a walkthrough of how I created this image. Because a lot of people have been like, hey, how did you do this image? And I'd love to see you while you work and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, it'd probably be really boring because most of what I do is just trial and error. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do before I do it. So it's kind of just creating art in a sense. Um, I know I do want to play with colors. And so what we did, here's the original image. Um, this is a duplicate of the background. I always make a duplicate just so if I mess up on something, I can go back. But here's the original image. I know I wanted to play with gels and I put a pink gel on the left side and I believe I had a slight blue gel on the uh, right side here. Um, so then I brought it into Photoshop and I just did my regular retouching routine, which is frequency separation. It's the same one that uh, Flern teaches on their YouTube channel. And I can post a link to that in this description. And um, after that, just a little bit of dodging and burning and um, probably a few little spot healing things if it needs it. But mostly frequency separation is how I get the skin looking how I want it to look. Um, and then this layer, uh, I believe I had dodge and burn. I, dar I darkened it a little bit and then I um, masked out the lighter areas just a tiny bit, which is why this one looks a little bit darker. But again, this is trial and error, so I probably did a few things and then forgot what I did and merged it down. Um, and then I made a new layer. This one I put in, uh, I dodged like right in the middle here, like right where her face is, just so it brightens that area up and looks lighter and your eye goes toward that area. And then I did a selective color, which is I went to the blacks and I pulled the yellows down negative four and then the cyan down negative one which kind of gives this bluish color in the um, shadows here and then in the reds i think i also did i pulled the cyan down a little bit so it kind of gives you this overall look here if it's noticeable enough and then this layer above it is just a little bit of a little, little bit more pink because um, if you look in the original it's uh, the light is doesn't hit all the way up to the top so I put a layer of pink there and then another layer of kind of this blue grayish color. Um, a lot of the times what I'll do is I'll just make a new layer and then um, take my brush tool. And then if you hit or uh, click on option or alt, um, I sample the color that's close, most closely to what I want to represent or recreate here, which is this gray bluish color. And then I masked it out here. You can see where I've masked the uh, wider part is showing and then the red part is gonna be this black part right here. Um, and then what is this layer? This layer may have not been anything except for to hold this mask here. Yep. So this, what I do a lot of the times is if I, if I make a selection, I'll put a blank layer and then um, copy the mask onto it and that'll be um, what I use is kind of my safety layer, which you can um, save the mask um, as a selection and all that stuff, but this is just so much faster for me. Um, so I just do it this way, and then it's just a blank layer. And then I went in and put in some smoke on this layer, and then here I uh, cleaned it up a little bit. You can see it without it. It just kind of covers her up too much. So I cleaned it up just a little bit um, on this masking area. And what I did for smoke, because I have a smoke brush here that I use, but if you want to do your own smoke, we'll go over to the left side of the screen here. And I have what I used. I'll just show you really quickly on one of these. So if you grab, um, say, for instance, this one right here, um, what you'll do is so I'll make a new layer and then put it on screen or whatever works for you, this, I like screen a lot. And then you pick two colors that are um, what you want, which is basically my pink and bluish color. And then down here in your brush settings, um, you go to your shape dynamics, and then you set your size a little bit. Um, you turn your angle, I go to about 40 or 50%. And that'll like change your angle and this will change your size each time you click. Or if you have a tablet, if you, um, make a stroke on the tablet, if that makes sense. Then you have your scattering, bring that up a tiny bit, not too much, your count can go up a little bit. And you can hold down Alt and it'll move these in smaller increments. 
and then you can hold down shift on movement larger increments if you want to do that uh collar dynamics click that on it'll um this will change how much your foreground color and background color here change per per stroke or per click um so i usually just keep them about where they're at around 50 percent or whatever uh and then you're good to go um and then i go to around i let's go to 100 percent on this one and then as you push down you can see that it'll like um change up its its rotation and its color and all that stuff so it's kind of a quick and dirty way of how i do the smoke i'll get usually more technical with it but there's that um and then i after i put the smoke in i thought i was just kind of missing a little bit of something i was like maybe let's see what we can do so i know i played around with a bunch of different shapes with um, colors and gradients and things like that but these bars were what i thought looked best kind of has this like 80s neon dance club kind of feel and i thought that was kind of rad so i just put these on here and it's basically i um See if I remember how to do this. I just uh, grabbed uh, Marquee. Is it Marquee? It's just the rectangle tool. Did this, and then I filled it with a foreground color, and then put it on screen. Actually, it might have been screen or overlay, overlay. Um, and then blurred it a little bit. Whoops, cancel that. Oh, you have to uh, rasterize it because it's a smart object. So rasterize this and turn on blur and then blur it to wherever you want to and then you can push okay. And then you've got yourself a little kind of light bar. And then I just paint it out around where I didn't want it to show. So like for this top one, um, or this is the middle one. Middle one around the arm, thought I wanted to go under the arm and this one's between the legs. And then there's one right here that goes behind the body. And to me, that was what looks good. So this is kind of a quick and dirty way of how I retouch this image. Um, just a lot of playing around until I was like, okay, I like this idea. I'm going to roll with it. And then I actually did a set of three because a lot of people on Instagram like to post three at a time for that layer effect. So I did three of them and they all have this similar fill. And what I did is I just did the same thing. I copied and pasted. Uh, most of my dodging and burning in these um, uh, pink and bluish layers to the other images. And then the smoke and the I did, um, I kept the same, um, what is it, brush preset and the same colors. And I just painted new smoke on the new one. So that way I wasn't copying and pasting the exact same smoke all the way throughout. It looked different for each image. And then I copied and pasted these three bars and I put them in the new image, and then for each image, I moved them around to whatever I liked in that image, if that makes sense. So that way, all the smoke and all the bars, the color bars, look a little bit different in each image. But having the um, colors and the selective color and stuff pasted, then you have um, a cohesive look all throughout that kind of series. So... Hopefully this answers some questions. If you guys do have more questions, uh, leave them in the comments field and I'll do my best to answer them. And thanks you guys for watching.